players and our staff um, that we're excited uh, to get back on the field with our team. Um, I've always enjoyed spring practice from the standpoint of te the teaching that goes on. You're not preparing for an opponent, so your sole focus is on your team and on your improvement on a daily basis. And, and um, so you really get to see a lot of teaching going on, and you really can, on a daily basis, see development. And um, you know, in the last 15 months, we've seen steady improvement in our program. Year one was about the transition, and now year two is about building a stronger foundation for our program. We finished the 2010 season strong, playing our best football at the end of the year. We've used the Buffalo victory as a springboard to our offseason, and our program at this time has a lot of positive energy in it that was evident by the strong recruiting class we were able to sign in February and by how our players have worked here in the offseason in their development. The last memory we have um, is a really positive one on the field, and I know our players um, want to have that feeling time and time again have been working um, towards that. I'm particularly excited about the leadership that has emerged on our team during this offseason. Uh, I see our players taking more ownership of the team. Now, this is a direct residual of being in the second year of a program, but it's a tremendously important step in the right direction. Um, we've had some staff transition, as you know, during the offseason, and I can't be more pleased with how that's come together. On both sides of the ball, we have experienced BCS coordinators and a, and a staff of excellent teachers. Uh, both our coaches and players understand that we have to improve in, in every phase of, of our game on the field and are eager to get started. We have 15 opportunities uh, to improve, and we can't wait to hit the field this afternoon. Um, with that being said, I'll take, uh, take questions. Nineteen ninety, you know, Kevin. Uh, um, I can remember um, I got hired. I was at that time the title was the on-campus recruiting coordinator. Kevin was the linebacker coach. I came into work. They were on the road recruiting, um, and uh, when 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 they came back off on the road that Friday, I'd organized our first recruiting weekend. I thought Bill Callahan was Kevin Cosgrove, and Kevin Cosgrove was Bill Callahan. I I we never met before, and 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 uh, just talked on the phone you know, multiple times a day as we were passing in the night. So. And, uh, you know, Kevin and I have stayed in great touch through that time and is very, very fortunate to have an opportunity to add him to our staff. What, what is, I mean, I guess, what is, why do you guys mesh? It sounds like you do. Why, why would you, well, what is it about him? Philosophically speaking, when, when you talk about building a program, which we are, we are doing here, and, and the model we're following here, which I've, I've said is my experience at Wisconsin, first and foremost, well, Kevin was a part of that experience. And he saw it go from one win to winning the Rose Bowl and how we did it on a daily basis. When we talked about him coming here, I said, now you'll see quite a bit of, of you know, what we did at Wisconsin um, in, in, in our stamp here. And uh, one of the mornings at our, at our 6 a.m. workout, um, what I had Kevin do was observe and not have a station of his own for the first several days so he can get to know the players and see the players. And, and I um, was being demonstrative at one point in, in, in a drill, and he leaned over to me and said, I thought Coach Alvarez just came to practice, <laughs> you know, and and uh, so he uh, um, had saw some things. Made it, he had a flashback. Um, I know spring ball is always kind of a renewed opportunity for players, new new season. I know there's some positions that aren't up for grabs, but our positions, a lot of positions. Uh, best players going together. How do you look at that? Well, I think every position is up for grabs because everybody has to improve. Okay. You know, as I tell the team, we have, somebody's running out of huddle first today because they have to. But you determine the depth chart, not the coaches. So someone runs out of there first today, and they've played a bunch of football for us, but they don't develop, and someone develops better than they do, then you know, we're in the business of putting the best 22 players on the field. Um, you know, and, and you, you develop, you know, competition stems from either fighting for to be a first teamer or fighting to be a second teamer. And, uh, you know, hopefully we've created more competition um, with our team, but you know, we'll have a lot more come August when we have 21 new, new young men show up at that time to add to our team. But there is quite a bit of competition I anticipate going on here for first team spots and second team spots. A stupid question about that. You thought it was Callahan, and mm -hmm. how did you sort that out without? No, they, they, they let me know who was who. <laughs> they called you out. Kevin said, Kevin's, no, I'm, I'm Kevin. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> kind of embarrassing for you. Yeah, well, at 20, whatever I was, 20, 
two years old, 21, yeah, I, not, I was 20, 24 years old, I think I was. That was, you know, I, and that staff that we had at Wisconsin in the early 90s, uh, I got put in my place more than once. <laughs> Rob, uh, Akron football has been in a little bit of the national press because you'll be, you'll be the first opponent for Ohio State. Uh, what are your thoughts about everything that's going on and playing, not coaching against Trestle? And well, I just know that Coach, Coach Trestle has been great to me over the years when I was an assistant um, <laughs> at Notre Dame. I was on a board in, in Wisconsin, but in Notre Dame, I was on a board of trustees of the AFCA. Coach Tressel sits on a board of trustees of the AFCA. There's no higher honor in our profession than to be on the board of trustees or coach association. He's been, always been great to me, um, continues to be great to me. When I first got the opportunity here, he's one of the first people I called to talk about coaching in the state of Ohio. And um, he's, he's a class act up and down, and um, and that doesn't change my thoughts of him. One, one cent, uh, we're, we want to play big venue games. I know our team's excited about playing in, in, in the horseshoe. We are a program made up of a dominant number of guys from the state of Ohio. And for them to get a chance to play at Ohio State is a great thing for them and a great thing for our team. Is it disappointing not to be across the sideline with him, do you think? Or is well, it for it? I, don't know what I don't know. Disappointing. I have the utmost respect for him. To get a chance to coach against him in a game, um, you know, but it's his program. His stamp is on it. And, um, that won't take away from the opportunity our team has to play um, that Saturday. That is kind of an opportunity, though, for you guys to make a mark no matter, I mean, 20 years from now, nobody's going to know who, was, who wasn't there. Well, it, it, when we get to that point in our, in, it, it, after training camp and we're focusing on an opponent, um, certainly that's a great opportunity for our team, and, and uh, I think they'll see that. We have a lot of work to do before we ever get to thinking about playing an opponent. Coach, expecting uh, progress from Patrick uh, this year, uh, given a, a whole year in the system? You would certainly expect a lot of progress from Patrick, as we would from all of our offensive players as we go through, because nothing has really changed in our system. A position coach hasn't changed, and the system hasn't changed on offense. So I'd expect you know tremendous development from all our players, and particularly the quarterback position. Can you talk about Clayton Moore a little bit? Well, Clayton. Um, you know, all I've been able to observe of him is is morning workouts, and and after our first morning workout, uh, um, when he struggled a little bit, uh, I texted him and said, "I take it you didn't do that at Gulf Coast <laughs> last year." And he said, "No, sir." But Clayton's got a great personality and a great demeanor about him, and um, shows some innate leadership skills just in the things that we've seen so far. I know he's anxious to get on the field and play, and and uh, we're anxious to get on the field and coach him. Now, Brian Wagner. Well, I mean, he's he's one of the young men, as I spoke about, leadership emerging on our team. He's one of the young men that that's happening with. And um, because obviously he comes back as our leading tackler from a year ago, but there has to be, the Mike linebacker has to be just more than that. Um, he's set in the front. He's set in the defense. He's getting a lot of things coordinated for us. So we've talked to Brian in terms of stepping up and, and, and you know being a leader, being more demonstrative at times. And he's taken that challenge um, seriously. Um, so we'd expect him to continue to grow in that and in our defensive system to continue to be a guy that we just count on every day, a real consistent presence in the middle. We know what we're going to get. He's got improving areas. They've been identified like everybody else. And I know he takes that seriously too. But he's um, just going through our morning workouts with, with our team. Year two compared to year one, it was like night and day. You know, because now they know what to expect um, in, in the morning. You know, what are we going to do? How long we're going to do it? What tempo we want to do it at? Um, you know, I mean, I really think our guys did a great job with that. Really pleased. Coach Cosgrove talked about making the team physically and mentally tough. Yes. How do you do that in practice? Well, it starts in, in our morning workouts, which we call the Winning Edge program. We had 10 of them prior to spring practice. And as, as I tell our guys, this might not make you a, a better linebacker or a better receiver because we might not do something really specific to your position, but ought to make you a more committed receiver or a more committed linebacker. So the mental toughness part of it takes place a little bit in that, in those challenging environment that we have in the mornings. And as we carry over now to the football aspect of it, when we put equipment on and you're doing physical, because football is a very physical game, then the physical toughness part will come out. And the mental toughness in the, in the, in the, between the lines has to come 
from the aspect of, you know, we lost two games in overtime. We lost another game on the last possession. Um, you know, so in those tough situations at the end of games, hopefully our winning edge program and how we're going to practice and develop our mental and physical toughness will now pay residual effects in those type of situations on a Saturdays in the fall.